All right, friends, I've got this giant stack, stack here. We are going to talk about Nomad Press, the content area resource you might not have heard of. That is amazing. All right, let's dive in. Hello, I am Sarah from Homespun Childhood. I am a former teacher turned homeschool mom of three and literacy specialist. Here on YouTube, I share all things reading, literacy, curriculum, planning, content, and more. So let's dive in. All right, before I move the stack over, Nomad Press is a publishing company. They have tons of resources for teaching. You can get most of these from your library. Some of them you can even get on like Hoopla and Libby and all those things. And you can get them fairly cheap on eBay. I have a ridiculous amount. Most of these are from eBay for like five bucks each. So let's jump in. We will start with my social studies stack. All right, so let's talk about these. There are different levels, kind of some are geared for elementary, some are geared for upper elementary, middle school, high school. The Explore Your World series is going to be the one that is geared towards like first grade through like third, fourth grade, okay? They have them for mostly for like history and science. We have used these for unit studies. We have used these to pair with um, like History Quest, for example, when I really wanted to go just pick a program that I could use week by week by week. And then my kids are like, no, we want more. We want to do deep dives. So then I would like pivot and pull these in. These are a great spine for unit studies. If you are like, Sarah, what is a unit study? I need help with that. See my video up there on unit studies. These are all pretty much gonna have the same format. You will know what to expect kind of year to year. They have different versions. Some of them are newer than others. Some of them are older. If you see two that are by Nomad Press but look like different titles but have the same topic, they're probably the same content. So don't go and buy like three different ancient China ones. Some of them are for older grades, um, the Great Depression, this Renaissance for Kids one, like this is much more appropriate for like middle to kind of high school almost. So we'll start over here and just kind of look through some of these. So if we look at this ancient civilization, Romans one, again, they're all gonna have this same format. I'm actually not gonna go, well, I will go through this one. I have an entire video on ancient Rome and ancient Greece that I will link as well. We start here with our table of contents. And in this series, we have Egyptians, Romans, Aztec, Mayans, and Incas, and then Greeks. Um, and then we go through kind of the setup here. You can use this for planning a unit study. You could do a month long or six or seven week long unit study using just this and pulling in living books and YouTube videos. So we've got timelines here. We've got some little quiz thingies. And this is written in such a way that if you have a strong reader, you can have them doing the reading. If you have a child who is ready for this level of content but is not a strong reader yet, then you can, you know, use this for your background information or you can read through here. They all have vocabulary in red with the definitions over here. We have our kind of big idea up here. We have lots of different text features. Did you know? We have real pictures. We have maps pulled in. Words to know, talking about aqueducts, for example. Welcome to Rome. Try this, little puzzles in here. Jokes, what do you call a bird in a fountain in ancient Rome? An aqueduct, get it, ha ha. We have good study practice in here, talking about the engineering design worksheet, scientific method. And then we move into projects. So each chapter in here has multiple projects. We did just a few projects, y'all. You don't have to do the projects. You can just use the book for like the textbook unit study feature. You can do the projects if you want to. So here's like a Rome notebook. Here's making a keystone puzzle, make a plum bob make an aqueduct, and then we move into chapter two. And again, the same kind of format here, and then more projects, okay? 
In the back of the book, we have a glossary with all of your words. You can use a text reader. If you have an iPhone, you can scan this in, just one column. If you do two columns, it gets all mixed up. You can scan the text, then you can get it into Word format. Then you can take it to chat GPT and you can say format this so that the vocabulary words are bold or put this in a two column thing and have all of your vocabulary kind of ready to go. Um, and then it has some websites and museums and essential questions down here and QR code glossary. So all of these books are set up basically the same way. So we have the ancient civilizations. We have money, okay? Bartering, Lewis and Clark, dimes, coins, coin testing, all the stuff. This is the next library copy. I think this was like $3, seven to 10. We have ancient, great ancient China products, projects. This one is one of the older books. Content is still good, okay? You still have the vocabulary and whatnot. It's just a little bit different. Great medieval projects. Great depression. Okay, and they do have, yeah, see here, 12 to 15. On their website, they are broken up into different kind of grade levels. They have lots of QR codes in here. Industrial Revolution, Chapter 4, Transportation, Words to Know, Transport. And we're going to go through all these different types. Again, we've got our vocabulary in here. We have Strong as Steel. We've got kind of some map work. We've got our projects. The Continental Exhibition, Make Your Own Telegraph. This one is 10 to 15. These pages, two of this one are like a little bit like nicer. I don't know, heavier print. They've got original sources in here. Okay, so pretty much anything you're teaching in social studies or science, they have a book for. Let's grab the science pile real quick. All right, so explore series here, ages six to nine, weather and climate, like just everything you need. Here's the more Explore Your World series, the old version. What's the weather? Temperature, air pressure, precipitation, clouds, extreme weather, climate change. This year, History Plus Online, which I'm sorry, friends over at History Plus Online, you need to rebrand again because that's confusing. Their whole year this year is science, and so each month is a different science topic, and they have about 25 to 7 minute long videos, so each one day, one video per day. So like, I think one of their months is on weather. So you could take that and take this, and boom, you've got your science covered for the month. Okay, lots of ideas in here. The vocabulary, again, biomes. This is ages nine to 12. Other books in this set. Again, we're going into the tropical savannas, grassland or desert, did you know, vocabulary, um, QR code, watch a cheetah in action in the savanna. Make honey wheat bread, the tundra, okay, biomes, water cycle, like an, ent an entire book on the water cycle, y'all. You could do a whole month on the water cycle. Huh, this was a, it's fun finding notes when you get them secondhand. I mean, like, look, y'all, this book looks brand new and I got it for like five bucks. And then we have this whole um, STEM engineering series. So tunnels, canals, and dams, bridges. Uh, there's a skyscrapers one, I think, because we did that last year. We did skyscrapers for quite a long time. And just like so much good stuff, y'all. Skyscrapers, tunnels, canals, and dams. Like if you have a kid that wants to unschool, right, and you're just not down for that, you can be like, look, we've got all these books. You pick. What do you want to learn about? And then just go. Honeybees with 25 great projects. And these are ones too, like if you're doing exploring nature with, with children, which I think is when I picked up the honeybees one, it's like maybe you do a couple of projects each year when you come back to it. More good study practice in here, essential questions, light and optics, simple machines that 
I don't think we actually ended up doing, but I did mark it all out. I haven't gotten to this book yet. Whoops. The pile is falling. Um, marshes, and they have a whole one on, whole series on like water. So marshes and swamps, oceans and seas, lakes and ponds, rivers and streams. So you can use these to supplement your science program. You can use these straight as a science program. Like each month, you could do one. Each couple months, you could do one. What we do a lot of these with a lot of these is I will take a picture and print it out and put it in my son's um, notebook, his, his school nest notebook. Here's ancient China. I don't know if that's, I think that's from Evan Moore. Um, but we'll put it in here and practice our mark. Oh, here's a good one. Uh, Kings and Queens in the Middle Ages and practice reading and marking texts and taking notes and doing our writing and all of that. And this has been right here's like from the skyscraper one, a really good way to pull in writing into our content areas and practice different reading and note taking strategies. I have a whole video about to come out or either came out just before this on notebooking. If you're wondering like, Sarah, what is this notebook? How do we do this? Um, and so these are great. Definitely check them out from your library or search them on eBay or whatever your secondhand user is um, because you can get them for fairly cheap. If you have questions or comments about these, drop them in the comments below. If you found this video helpful, please hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe so you can check out my future videos. If you're wondering how to incorporate this kind of content area stuff into writing, I do have an entire series over on Instagram that I will try to link below as well. Um, and yeah, stay tuned. We will probably be doing more of this this upcoming school year. Thanks everyone.